Ben Davison here with the Euro Hoop Live podcast. We're interviewing Coach Dean Murray. We're going to be talking specifically about South Korea and his experience, um, the details of as a player or a coach or a draft, uh, what the country's like as a whole. We're going to go over the uh, the South Korea experience. Coach, how are you doing today? Hey, doing great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, let's get right into it. Um, you know, we want to be able to get, dig into whether uh, South Korea is a good place to play. Uh, we did an interview on the, uh, one of the teams that you coached there, uh, the city, the town, how it was run, and you, you had nothing but positive things to say. Let's go into the details of how a player would end up signing or getting into the uh, entered into the draft for the South Korean League. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, as I said before, South Korea is an awesome place. First, it's an awesome country to be in. And uh, the culture and the lifestyle for an American or a foreigner is great. But as far as getting into the league, typically in the past, they've had uh, the KBL draft camp where as a player, you would go there in the summertime. Uh, they typically have it two to three days right after the NBA summer camp. And it's in Las so, Vegas? Yes, it's in Las Vegas. Okay. And, you know, the Koreans, they're one of the – Outside of a few of the big European clubs, the Koreans scout worldwide. Okay. Uh, you will see them all the big events. They'll start in the springtime. They'll be at Portsmouth Invitational. Uh, when I was working with the teams, we, that would probably be our first stop of the spring right after their season is over. Uh, they typically will go down to Puerto Rico in early June and scout there. Might try to catch the end of the big Euro League tournaments in Europe. So you would say probably because I think that NBA Summer League ends around August 7th, the 10th, somewhere around that mid, mid early uh, August. So you'd say probably around that same time as when they do their uh, exposure camp. Yes, typically two days afterwards, okay. uh, two days afterwards. Uh, and the, you just you pay your own money and get there on your own. Uh, a lot of the times the Korean teams, have, you know, they do a good job of scouting. So they have a handful of guys penciled in already. Uh, there's there's 10 teams in the league. So when you go to the camp, uh, maybe two or three of the teams might have already re-signed their guy from last year. Okay. And if you are one of the guys who get re-signed, you typically – get an automatic bump in salary. They have a percentage that they'll, you know, negotiate so with you about that. Here, you get a nice, like you said, a salary bump the longer you stay there. Exactly, exactly. So um, then it's really competitive. There's, there's, they'll only allow 100 guys at the camp. Okay. And they screen them. There'll probably be four or 500 apply. They'll end up with 100. And typically, that's 100 guys fighting for 15 spots. So 15 real spots, okay, because and there's two Americans allowed on each team over in Korea, in South Korea? Right, okay. right. You so got to figure there's probably, there's probably at least five guys coming back to so, begin with. So when you have the uh, combine, are, you, are they doing like official height? Are they doing a respiratory recovery tests? Are they doing all kinds of tests? Or are they just really looking like an NBA combine? Or are they doing um, just go out there, do some drills, shooting drills, big man drills? And they'll, they'll, bring them, they'll, bring them in the, they'll bring them in the first night. Uh, they'll bring them in the first night for orientation and do all the uh, measurements. Okay. Uh, with shoes, without shoes. I never understood why they do them without shoes because you don't play barefoot. Exactly. But uh, that's, that's – <laughs> That's one of the things they do, but they do they do reach and all that stuff. Well, you can, so, you can put on two pairs of ankle braces, three pairs of socks, <laughs> and insoles, and uh, that type of stuff. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it, the one thing about the Koreans, it seems like they change their system every year. Okay. Uh, you know, the last couple of years and and this year they went to free agency, but they could they they always talk about they could go back to the camp next summer. But they're always messing around with the rules. Like two years ago, they had a point guard spot where they one of the imports had to be six two or under. Okay. And they've had it in the years past where both guys had to be six seven and under. Yeah, I and then the Philippines where you couldn't have anybody over six seven six eight for the national players, and like you said, there's little always little tweaks and um, that they make. Right. And, and now this year, they I mean, we're talking a little bit about the camp and the whole system overall, because it would go back to this, I, I'm sure, soon. 
Uh, they go to free agency this year. But the, the Korean camp was really awesome. They bring in all the measurements the next uh, – that night. And then for two days, uh, all they do is play. Okay. They just play. They, they have the team split up, and they play uh, two games a day. So they end up playing four games total. Uh, so then once you get over there, once, the they, once they pick that team, is that one of those things you end up going home and then they call you and your agent and then how do the agents work? Do they have to have a South Korean You know, they do it. They they do it really cool. The last day in Vegas at the hotel where everybody's staying, they rent out one of the ballrooms and they have a draft just like the NBA. Oh, really? That's got to be a nice experience. Yeah. Yeah, you, you go in there and they do the, the ping pong balls or whatever yeah. system they've set up that year. It's a little bit of drama. Yeah. They, they you know, they pull out the board <laughs> just like the NBA does it. You That's know, awesome. they do it just like the NBA. And they put the things up in the order that they're going to pick. The two the two in the finals are always the last two picks. Okay. So, and they do a wraparound draft where they go one through ten – and then it goes back 10 down to the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So if you're the 10th pick, you get two in a row right in the middle. Nice. Yeah, it's a good little and then, Go ahead. It's a little bit, uh, you know, and everybody, you have to come to it. When you get your name called up, you go to the back with the lawyer and the, and the contract is there. You have to sign it on the spot. You've got 15 minutes to decide. Or you'll be banned from three years for playing in Korea. And now you had brought up some – that's a cool little attribute. They put you on the, uh, the hot seat like that. But you had also said that there was an issue. Um, was that in South Korea with the um, improper documentation for yourself and another player while you were there? Or was that another country? No, that, that was when I was coaching in Taiwan two years ago. Okay. So let's go to the Korea. So once you get over there – um, is, let me ask you this a quick question. Is there a draft for coaches or they already have – you can pick and choose the coaches you want whenever you need to? Uh, there's only in the you know history of the league, there's only been a few teams that actually bring in foreigners, and they're the same ones. Okay. The couple of teams I work for, LG and Anya, uh, KCC has a team, and Samsung. They, they brought in foreigners in the past, but – and most of the time, the coaches uh, are picked before you get there because you're helping them select the – most of the time, they're, you're the ones helping them select the American player. Okay. So once you get over there to the season and stuff, when does the season start? You said this all starts in uh, – the draft all happens between August 10th and the 15th, that three-day little window. Once the season starts, when does that start? When do they want you over there? How much preseason? Um, things the of that nature. They, they bring you over right at, uh, like, the first week of September, okay. end of August. Right, it's right away. It's right away. So you have about two or three weeks to go home after that, get all your stuff, say your goodbyes, pack up and leave. Um, right. Once you, and, over, and, once you get over there, is there a training camp? Um, do they get right into the – like, the, what was the time frame when the season starts? You know, right when we got off the plane the next day, they, they expect us to be at practice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Koreans typically uh, train very hard during the preseason. It's two a days. Yep. Uh, we'll have one day off to, during typically two on Monday, two on Tuesday, off Wednesday morning, two on Thursday, two on Friday, go Saturday morning, and then off Saturday afternoon and all day Sunday. Okay. That's typical schedule in the preseason. Okay. And so once you get over there, like, let's go into the details. Like, what was it like being over there? What was uh, How did you feel as uh, if you were to recommend someone signing a contract with Korea and going through this whole experience? Give us give us the lowdown from your perspective. Right. Um, I would think, you know, obviously living over and, – and the other great thing is, like, the Koreans will do for you at the draft. Once you sign, they'll give you a bonus right up front when you <laughs> when you leave the draft, draft camp there. So, you know, they're all about taking care of the players. Okay. They, they do a real good job on that. You know, there's a full-time translator there with you the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, typically with me, I would get around just a little bit more on my own. You know, I was a little bit more independent. Yeah. But for the players, the translator's at their disposal 24-7. That's his job. Okay. Uh, you know, he comes and picks us up every day to go to practice. And so, and, you know, for the players, they really need him. He, he orders food for them. You know, so he's like tells them what they need. Yeah, he, he's really with the players the whole time. Okay. 
and so let's go into like the overall, like, you know, it's kind of wrap this, this up. I mean, cause that whole process is something new to me. I didn't know that's exactly how it happened. Um, but once you get over there, the season, uh, you said there was 10 teams. Uh, how many times do you play those teams? How many games per week type of stuff? Okay. Uh, the preseason is kind of long. It's two months, but you play a lot of games in the preseason. Typically you'll take one trip out of the country. I mean, we went to Philippines, China, and Japan when I was over there. So you'll go get a nice trip to go visit somewhere else and play some games. Uh, once you get into the season, there's uh, 10 teams. You'll, you'll play nine opponents, and there's six rounds. So you'll play each team once each round. So you end up playing 54 games okay. in the regular season, which is great, as you know, from being overseas and – you know, me as a coach being overseas, you know, you're getting to play two or three games a week, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. So yeah. once like you get said, they go hard in the preseason and then during the season, during the regular season, you have three games. So it means less practice. Right. And and they do a good job uh, like we do in the state. So typically the, the, the night before a game, you'll have a film session in the hotel or at the practice facility. If you're at home, you'll go over the brief scouting report. You'll do most of the scouting report the night before. Okay. And then you can do a little bit of a walk through the next day of the game, but it's it's real similar to what we do here in the states. And then of course, if you make the, and then there's ten teams. Six teams make the playoffs. Okay. And, and the first two, uh, first two teams get buys. Okay. So you, you're automatically into the semifinals. Three will play six. Four will play five. Uh, the first round will be uh, three out of five. Awesome. And then. Uh, Two rounds, three out of five, and then the finals would be best of seven. And then let me ask you this: in like you have in Italy, you have A one and A two, Liga A and Liga Due. Um, is there a switching in that league, or are all those top ten teams always in that Division One in South Korea, or are there teams that are vying to come up to Division One and the last two places get kicked out of uh, Division One? Uh, they they typically they just have one one league. Yeah. What they did start in the last five years in Korea is they, they developed their own little D League. So they have a G League, kind of semi G League in the uh, Korean, where they got young players who aren't on the team playing with their club teams. But all 10 teams are there every year. It's the same 10 teams. Awesome. So let's dig into the, like, the final portion of things. I remember a conversation when, when there, uh, a lot of players go over there for finances and obviously what your hoop life's um, goal is to be able to say, hey, this is the good countries to go to. This is the great teams to play for. These are the bad teams. These are the big cities. These are the small cities. We want to be able to give all the information. And so how is Korea as a country financially and their stability and longevity and payment uh, schedule? Uh, Korea is great. Uh, it's part of their culture, part of their honor to, you know, honor their commitments. So they'll never miss a payment. Uh, they always pay on time. You never have to worry about that. You're always going to get your bonuses. And now, since the last year or two, they've switched. They've tried the free agency route versus the camp. They're really paying a lot of money right now. And you're seeing a lot more. Salary-wise. I, I, you know, I would think a lot of the guys now are making, you know, four to 500000 for the season at least. So you, they're looking for top level players, players that are playing in possibly the NBA summer leagues. And right. That they, they, they actually have a, a interesting rule. Uh, they relax it a little bit here and there. But if you're actually a player who's played in NBA games, uh, they can't they can't take you for two years. Oh, really? So if you played, they can't take a player who's after you played in that actual game. Right, and they have a one-year thing on somebody who was in a Euro League. Wow. Okay, so that's a little hiccup for certain players. You have to. Uh, I think just because some of the teams can't pay more money than others, so uh, they just want to make sure you know they're keeping a little more level balance of the level of the player they're getting. Awesome. Well, Coach, this has been a very important information. I think this is something that we need to be able to do on each country and saying, hey, what are the pros and the cons? And it sounds like with what you have to say and that your time there, that South Korea is probably one of the better places if you can enter into their NBA draft, get into their summer leagues in early August, and uh, to have it be a, it's a 
it's a real shot to play high quality basketball and be able to get paid doing it at the same time. Yeah, great place, great place to live and great money. Outstanding. Coach, thank you for your uh, your time and your your intellect on this uh, topic of playing in basketball in South Korea. Okay, thank you very much.